place on Earth whose wonders have rarely been seen. This wild and isolated realm of Siberia has been closed to outsiders for much of the last hundred years. A strategic Soviet military base made this forbidden territory, but wildlife was left to flourish. Only recently has this vast land been opened to our eyes. The place is an Eden called Kamchatka. Lying in the far east of Russia, Kamchatka is a volcanic peninsula at the edge of the cold Bering Sea. This program was made possible by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. Few places on Earth are as untouched or alive as Kamchatka. The greatest life pulse begins every summer in the waters just off its shores. In one of the largest migrations on Earth, the first wave of millions of salmon arrives to seek the lakes and streams where they were hatched five years before. The journey upriver is guided by scent and will take them hundreds of miles deep into Kamchatka's interior. The instinct to reproduce compels them on what will be the most difficult and perilous trial of their lives. last four years in the open ocean, the salmon have traveled 10,000 miles and survived the constant threat of sharks and seals and killer whales. Now, when they are nearly home, there is one more danger to face. Some 10,000 grizzlies live in Kamchatka, one of the densest populations of bears on Earth. They have waited hungrily for the salmon to arrive, and for the next four months, they will gorge themselves.
During the brief summer, a Kamchatka grizzly can eat up to 80 pounds of salmon a day. That means catching about 15 fish. The fatty skin and rich eggs are favorite parts and will help the bear to gain the three to four hundred pounds of fat it will need to survive the coming six-month winter. Many more salmon survive than are eaten, and the males have undergone a striking transformation. Since leaving the ocean, they have grown huge jaws, developed humped backs, and sprouted long, sharp teeth. These new features are not for feeding. They are weapons for territorial battles. Even after their arduous journey, only the strongest males will win the right to breed. When a pair is formed, the female makes a series of nests. She, like her mate, has not eaten in weeks, and neither will eat again. Their sole mission now is to reproduce. Their fate after that is to die. Up to 5,000 eggs are laid at once and fertilized by the male. Only one egg in 20,000 will survive to be an adult who returns here to spawn again. Within days of spawning, the salmon perish. Their bodies will soon decay and provide nutrients for the water where their offspring will be born. When bears have had their fill of salmon, winter is not far away. But before Kamchatka surrenders to the cold, it explodes with a brief flash of color. By December, the last of the grizzly bears head to their mountain dens for a half year of hibernation. The salmon continue to run, wave after wave, arriving throughout the winter. Kuroskoya, Kamchatka's largest lake rarely ices over, creating a blue oasis, while the rest of Kamchatka freezes solid. The lake's abundant salmon make it a haven for one of the rarest eagles in the world. A thousand stellar sea eagles spend the winter here, feeding and squabbling over food. Twice the weight of the American bald eagle, the birds have seven-foot wingspans. They use their size and strength to intimidate other eagles in order to steal their food.
Even the heavy snows of winter cannot hide the mountains of volcanic ash that cover Kamchatka's landscape. For thousands of years, volcanoes have spewed ash that now forms hills and plains throughout the peninsula. More than 200 volcanoes make up Kamchatka's spine. 30 of them are active, connecting this Siberian wilderness directly to the Earth's molten interior. While volcanoes can take life, here they are life givers. The dense clouds of ash fertilize nearby lakes, nourishing the entire food chain. This greatly increases the number of salmon, which in turn increases the number of bears. Bears who often make their dens on the steep volcanic slopes. Their long sleep ends with the warmer days of spring. But warm weather can also bring danger by making snow fields unstable. All over Kamchatka, bears have begun to emerge. First-year cubs weighing barely 10 pounds enjoy their first day above ground. They were born in their den five months ago while their mother was asleep. Then they weighed only a pound. Cubs stay close to their mother, for other bears are on the prowl. Adult males will sometimes kill a cub, and mother must stay on guard. This newly mated pair has no appetite for cubs. Bears just out of their dens are drawn to one of Kamchatka's greatest natural wonders. It is a place of warmth and abundance called the Valley of the Geysers. Deep fissures in the ground allow surface waters to reach the hot magma below. The water boils and is thrust back as a geyser. With much of Kamchatka still covered in snow, the valley serves as a magnet for life. 
plants flourish year-round in a constant bath of steam and heat, and the wealth of vegetation is a lure for hungry bears. The bears congregate here, drawn by the bountiful springtime in which Kamchatka starts to bloom. The seacoast is the next place where grizzly bears come to feed. Their mountain dens are still covered with snow. Here, there are endless amounts of freshly sprouted grass for the hungry bears to eat. It is also an inviting place for young cubs to explore. Snow sheep are also drawn to the grass, but avoid the bears, even little bears. They retreat to the seaside cliffs where predators cannot follow. On this abundant coastline, bears can find much more than grass to eat. Amid the seaweed are crustaceans, dead fish, and other frozen snacks. At this time of year, the grizzlies are mainly vegetarians, but they are also opportunists and will easily kill for a meal. Seals learned this long ago and keep a healthy distance. Otters must also beware of hungry, scavenging bears. For a mother and her pup, retreat to the sea is the safest option. When sea otters are not feeding, they often congregate in large groups called rafts. Intensely social creatures, these five foot long, 80 pound animals find safety in numbers from one of the largest predators in the sea. Free-roaming pods of killer whales weighing up to nine tons each can make a quick meal of otters.
the otter's best chance for survival now is to quickly swim back to land. do not reach land in time. Upwelling currents filled with nutrients make the Bering Sea one of the richest oceans in the world. In early June, thousands of capelin fish wash onto the shores, drawn by the instinct to mate. Within a week, the fish will be dead. More nourishment for the living. With a sea so full of fish, it is not surprising to find predators who specialize in catching them. Each summer, millions of tufted puffins arrive on the islands off Kamchatka to nest. On Toporokov Island alone, 100,000 puffins catch up to 4 million fish each month. Puffins lay a single egg that must be incubated for two months. While one parent cares for the egg, the other heads for the sea. need cliffs to get airborne, and their flying is ungainly. It is once they dive underwater that puffins truly fly and become master predators of the sea. In the world below the waves, the otherwise awkward puffins perform graceful water ballet. The Bering Sea also supports the ultimate winged predator, the giant stellar sea eagle. Remote Kamchatka is their nesting ground and one of the few places in the world where these great birds breed. The eagle's powerful talons allow them to pluck fish directly from the sea, while their sharp beaks enable them to rip open the hide of a five-pound salmon. Often, two or three chicks are hatched, but usually only one will survive. Keeping them fed is a full-time job. On Bering Island, just off Kamchatka's coast, more than a hundred thousand fur seals gather for the summer. 
Because of their brown, grizzled coats, the Russians call them sea bears. Dominant males, or bulls, divide the rookery into personal territories. Six feet long and weighing 500 pounds, they are three or four times bigger than the females and maintain harems of up to 50. Protecting their harems from other ambitious bulls often leads to bloody battles. Conflicts are about dominance and a battle will not end until one of the bulls backs down. While the sea bears have battled on the beach, a mother has given birth to five pups, each weighing half a pound. They are Russian Arctic foxes, who have just spent the night in their den. While the pups stay hard at play, mother keeps a careful eye on the seal rookery below. She has chosen this den because the seals are the key to her family's survival. Every day she makes her way down in hopes of finding food. Though her visits are not welcomed, she'll patrol the entire colony, scavenging for dead animals. Foxes are the rookery's cleaners and garbage collectors, and despite their unpopularity, they make a good living here. Fur seal pups get a hard start in life. Soon after birth, they're abandoned by their mothers. Often they spend a week or more alone, while their mothers fish far out to sea. The pups must teach themselves to swim, and some take to the water more readily than others. Sometimes it is best to take a good look before leaping. Even the most reluctant pup is a hungry pup, and the sound of a female's voice that could be his mother is finally enough to spur him into the water. At last, the pup takes his first tentative swim. Unfortunately for the pup, it's not his mother. Unaware, he now ventures into a battle zone where males without harems will use him to vent their frustrations.
Since the pup can barely swim, he's in real danger of drowning. At last, a chance to escape. Battered and bruised, the tiny pup may still drown if he cannot lift himself onto shore. Though exhausted, the pup has survived his first swim. Not all pups are so lucky. 50% do not survive their first year. For mother fox, the dead provide nourishment. It is food that will help her produce more milk for her own pups. Though almost killed on his first swim, the young pup has recovered. It has been six days since his mother left, and seeing other pups nursing only makes him hungrier. With so many other mothers nearby, the pup attempts to beg for milk to no avail. The pup tries another female, but again, no luck. Sneaking milk without asking also doesn't work. Perhaps more stealth is required. Last, the pup's mother returns. But with 10,000 pups in the colony, it's no easy task to find her own. The key is sound. Every seal has a distinctive call. Finally, mother and pup are reunited. Although in two or three more days, she will abandon him once again. The puffins are also busy fishing for their young. But delivering fish to their burrows can be as difficult as catching them. Flocks of gulls and kittiwakes devote themselves to robbing the puffins mid-air.
some, food simply falls from the sky. Others prefer the ambush to the chase. No puffin burrow is more than five or ten feet from a waiting thief. Once a puffin has escaped aerial attack, it must often run a gauntlet on the ground. Puffins land in what looks like the safest spot and then try to reach their burrows. The strategy has its risks, and the puffins are often attacked and robbed. After five hours of fishing for its chick, the puffin must now start all over. Despite the air and land blockade, many puffins do get their food home. The parents, who mate for life, always share the work of finding food. The growing chick must fledge in two weeks and therefore stuffs itself with up to 20 fish a day. After a day of stealing fish, the kittiwakes take a rest. The birds are stuffed and lazy now, prime targets for a hungry fox. Fish caught by a puffin, then stolen by a kittiwake, will soon be in the stomach of the fox. Only one of the sea eagle's chicks has survived, but it has grown quickly and is always hungry. Ravens often buzz the nest looking for a free meal. They will keep their distance as long as an adult is there with the chick. Eventually, the mother must leave, and now the clever ravens can begin their daily game.
Though larger than the raven, the eagle chick is only two months old, a novice in the tactics of survival. At three years old, the smaller raven has the advantage of experience. He also has the aid of a henchman, and the goal is to steal the chick's food. As one raven distracts the chick, the other sneaks in for the meal. The score today is Ravens 1, Eagles nothing. Summer has returned to Kamchatka, and in the sea, a new generation of salmon struggle home. The endless cycle of life a predator and prey begins again. The bear mother's three cubs, one is undersized. This is a disadvantage in a place where one half of all cubs do not survive their first year. Even so, this 15 pound runt tries his best to master the skills of survival. Life among bear cubs is competitive. Only the strongest will succeed at becoming full grown adults. For now, the runt makes do with scraps his brothers have no interest in. He must eat and gain weight if he is to have a chance of surviving the coming winter with his mother and bigger brothers. Another bear family fishes the lake. Catching salmon in deep water is difficult. It requires experience and specialized skill. And the pickings can be slim. The mother's three-year-old cub would rather play than fish. Though her cubs do not know it, this is their last year with their mother. By the end of summer, she will abandon them. Then, for the rest of their lives, they must survive on their own. For the moment, though, the cubs can still rely on their mother for a quick snack of nourishing milk.
The three spring cubs will stay with their mother for another two or three years. During that time, they have much to learn. One of their most important lessons is how to deal with strange bears, who have also come here to fish. It is only during the salmon run that grizzlies have such close contact. To prevent bloodshed, when grizzlies confront one another, bears adopt ritualized body postures. Heads down and shoulders hunched means aggression. Simply walking off or running is the easiest way to avoid a fight. Instinct tells the runt that the best way to avoid danger is to climb the nearest tree. The rest of his family quietly waits for the feuding grizzlies to leave. One day, this tiny cub may come to dominate other bears. But right now, the wisest strategy is to play it safe. Soon, the conflict is over. It is safe for the runt to climb down and join the rest of his family in the vital work of fishing and gaining weight for the winter. While climbing down the tree, the runt has injured his paw. Now it will be even harder to keep up. Even with his injured paw, the runt bravely scares off an intruding raven. Perhaps that same spirit will keep him alive in this timeless wilderness called Kamchatka. the Living Edens. Visit PBS online at pbs.org.